is Mark Madden. I am a radio professional. I am broadcasting live from my kitchen. If you don't like it, go piss up a rope. With that in mind, <laughs> let's bring on the greatest professional wrestler that's ever lived. He is the 16-time world champion. He is the nature boy, Ric Flair and Nate. I don't even want to talk about wrestling today. I want to talk about NFL football. That might have been the greatest weekend of professional football we've ever witnessed. I couldn't agree more. Unbelievable. Who do you like out of the teams that are left? Kansas City. Yeah, they look like a juggernaut, don't they? How about Mahomes Kel- going out there with 13 seconds left yeah. in regulation? I don't know how he even got the balls to think he could pull that off, let alone do it. Well, not only that, they, f- they figured out a way to bottle up Tyreek Hill the whole season. But, man, did he get have a game there today? And Kelsey is on another world. I mean, unbelievable. Well, I think Tyreek Hill was banged up more often than not during the season. And I think it seems anyway like he's relatively healthy now. But you're right about Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is the most unstoppable receiver in football because he's got tight end size and pretty close to wide receiver speed moves. He is just the total package. He's like Gronk version 2.0. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Well, and it might be noted that the Ric Flair jinx is still in full effect because Tampa Bay lost. But I told you I was pulling for Aaron Donald. Well, you are now. And Von Miller. I know those guys. You, are, you, you know everybody. You know Brady, too. <laughs> I know. The sad thing now is I think Brady might actually retire. You think so? I don't think so. I, well, they, they had all 22 guys back this year. Everyone stayed. Now they get the free agency thing, just like Green Bay. I think Rogers will leave, and I think, I think, well, what, what is Tom Brady going to do? Well, Brady was missing a lot of weapons, and Antonio Brown kind of fractured the team's chemistry with, with his stunt on his way out the door. Uh, I, I think Brady, I, I don't know, I'd almost wish he wouldn't come back because my fear is that he stays a year too long, yeah. like so many quarterbacks do. And looks bad. I mean, right now, you know, mid forties, playing well, like he is. The, 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 but the, what hurt them? They could not block Aaron Donald and Von Miller. And who's fifty four? With the fifty four on the, on the Rams. I, I don't have my rosters in front of me. Uh, amazingly, the, the, the other outside linebacker. They but, but well, Tampa was without their right tackle. That was a killer. I, I know. Missing some weaponry that hurt, and they fell behind. And Brady certainly rallied them. Yep. But but uh, but but. L.A. won at the death, like every game yeah. uh, ended, ended right at the death. Now, yeah. uh, what's your take on Aaron Rodgers? Where do you think he should go? Or should he stay in Green Bay? No, well, he can't stay in Green Bay because they're in a world mode. But well, I don't he, know that they are for sure, but they're $45 million over the cap. Yeah. And, and they're going to have to make some cuts. Leonard Floyd, by the way, that's that other Leonard linebacker. Floyd, yeah. Right, yeah, he had wow. a heck of a game for the L.A. Rams. Yeah. But but there's the rumors that Aaron Rodgers might come to Pittsburgh. I just don't see it. I think Pittsburgh, you know, despite having made the playoffs, they got a bit of rebuilding to do themselves. Plus, which Aaron Rodgers can't win big games. I mean, he's 1-4 and four in the NFC Championship. He, he played horribly. I know their special teams blew that game against San Francisco, but he only – Led the offense to ten am, am I, points. Am I, am I watching first take? Am I watching get up? What, no. you, you sound just like those guys. No, you're hearing the absolute truth about Aaron Rodgers. Tom Brady, see Aaron Rodgers, and yet I just don't buy into him like like so many do. Uh, and Jimmy Garoppolo keeps beating him. Nate, when Jimmy Garoppolo keeps beating you, there's a problem. <laughs> well, like I said, a great weekend of football. I can't knock anybody. I thought everybody played their hearts out. No, no, great games, yeah, but, uh, yeah. but but some are better than others, and it's time to give credit to, to those that are. I I think that game between Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes is going to be an absolute shootout. I think those two and Justin Herbert and, of course, Josh Allen from Buffalo, they're the four pillars of quarterbacking in the NFL. Maybe throw Lamar Jackson in there. And I think it's good that we're going out with the old and in with the new at that position because these guys are very exciting. Oh, unbelievable. I, the the Allen kid, I was pulling for him big time. Jeez, what a game. If you could take one quarterback, one young quarterback out of those five, who would you take? Mahomes. Yeah, me too, but it's closer than 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 than, than him being so great. You know, n- like n- number two would be Josh Allen. 
He's got a cannon for an arm. Cannon. I tend to agree that's my one two. But and I And he can I, run with the ball. I don't want to sleep on Justin Herbert just because his team didn't make the playoffs. I think they got a great future with the LA Chargers. Justin Herbert reminds me of the new Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. Well, so does Josh Allen, except faster, more agile. Yeah, well, that's that's today's athlete. They always get yeah. faster and they always get more agile. Now, today's podcast is going to focus on the 30th anniversary of you winning the Royal Rumble, going 60 minutes, winning the WWE Championship in 1992. Of course, it's Royal Rumble time with the WWE in St. Louis coming up. And Rick, you arrived in WWE in August of 91. When you got there, what were you told by Vince about WWE's plans for you? Nothing. He said I would make more money than I made at WCW. We shook hands and I was there. That's it, no contract, no nothing. No contract, just happy to be there. I had friends in both companies always, but I just happy to be there. Now, were you trepidatious at all? Were you worried that you might not get your due respect? No, because I wasn't worried about, I, I mean, I had more friends, I had more friends up there. I mean, you wouldn't, it's amazing. You would not believe how hurt alienated people. I mean, Jim, made, Jim heard the president at that time of WCW. Yes, he made everybody's life miserable. How, how so? Well, start with Tully and Iron. He, he messed the deal up with them. And then he, you know, he, 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 he just, Jim Ross, Jim Ross got along with him because Jim Ross went and drank with him. I couldn't listen to him bullshit. So I, didn't, I never went and drank with him to socialize. But, um, you know, everybody was just separated. And this booking committee thing was just a bunch of, it, who knows? Well, Nate, it is amazing to me, now as then, that he got the job. He was wholly unqualified to run a wrestling company. And if he would have just stuck to the, to the abacus, to the nickels and dimes, to the accounting, maybe it would have worked. But he stuck his nose in creative, and that's where it all went awry. Yeah, and, and, and Jack Petrick's the guy that hired him. So I don't know. I mean, I was there for the whole thing, guys. I can walk you through it a hundred times over. So, um, starting with the fact that after <laughs> I had, I was not on contract, as you know, when I first went there, when when Turner bought, right? So, and then I think I've told you the story. Like I find out from the guy that was in charge of the the transaction or whatever you, with the word would be used that they wouldn't have bought the company. If I wasn't available. Right, that's that's for sure true. I heard that at the time, for sure. Yeah, and Crockett, God rest his soul. I mean, I'm not mad at, I'm not mad at all now, but I mean, well, that didn't, he, he told them I was under contract. Flair comes with us. Without, so. Well, it got the sale through, and, and obviously you, you, I mean, you eventually did sign a contract there, obviously. Yeah, but un, under duress. <laughs> that does, that could, make, does that make sense? That could be on your tombstone, Nate, under duress. Yeah, but can you imagine what my contract would have been worth? If oh, I had, had, had you known the sale was predicated on you. Yes. Yeah, am amazing. Yeah. Now, now, when you got to New York, what were your early days there like before the Rumble? How did you, how did you fit in? How did you like the way you were used initially? Because you came in with a pretty big splash, as the picture of Bobby there with the big gold belt would indicate. Oh, it was it was fa fantastic. Um, the, the funny thing, I, my first night there, I I called Sherry Martell. And I met Sherry in Dayton, Ohio, um, and we drank all night. And we got to work. We got to the building fifteen minutes late. My first day there, Vince pulled me and said, "You're five hundred dollars out right now. Don't do it again." <laughs> I hadn't been there. <laughs> I did. So. But it was Debiasi. I mean, so many friends back then. I mean, Barry Darso, Debiasi, the Road Warriors. Um, Piper was coming back and forth. Uh, I mean, just a, a tremendous group of guys. Almost as good as the guys in the 80s. Um, when we all rode together back in the 80s. You know what I mean? Great American Bash tours and stuff like that. But I mean, so many wonderful friends. Terry, uh, Terry Taylor. I mean, the list goes on. Well, Nate, when I knew it was going to work, you in New York was 
before you ever appeared on TV. When Bobby brought the belt on TV, I said, okay, they're yeah. going to let him be Ric Flair. They're going to let him be the champ. They're going to let him be what he is. And that must have come as a slight relief to you anyway, because they didn't always do that with guys who came in from other promotions. No, he didn't change my, my he didn't change me or alter me or anything. He just told me to calm down. Well, I tell you that now. And I'll be telling you that in St. Louis when we do our, our live show, which is uh, just a few days away as we tape this. General admission tickets still available, just a few if you're, How if is you're that watching possible? this. How I is know. that possible? I know, I know. I would figure that... Uh, you would have thought all my ex-girlfriends would have bought those alone. And the strippers. The, I, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Now, the, the 1992 Royal Rumble was in Albany, New York. I was there. When did you find out... You were going to go 60 minutes, win the Rumble, and win the title. You've told that story before. Tell it again. Well, somebody, Jake Roberts mentioned to me, and I thought Jake was just, you know, ribbing me for me to, you know, you never know what. I, I, I knew Jake, but I didn't know him that well. And he'd been there established. And, uh, you know, I'd worked with Jake in, in uh, Mid-South so and, and in uh, the Carolinas. But I got to the building, and uh, Pat and uh, Vince pulled me in, and, Gave me the scoop. That was it. Were you surprised? He, what was your reaction? I was overwhelmed. Oh my God, I thought, what the hell? I, mean, I wasn't worried about going the hour. I, I wasn't worried about the in-ring part of it. I just, emotionally, I was in shock because that was never promised to me. Well, it certainly worked out well for the company because I, I think it's still, to this day, one of the iconic moments not only in your career, Rick, but in, in WWE history. What was the game plan for the Rumble? Who laid it out? And how much detail was there in how it was laid out? Well, it, it, it's hard to... It, they don't lay, they weren't laid it out back then like they do now. But um, they just brought us all into a big room and and uh, then we, we all talked amongst each other. And the thing of it is, we all knew each other. So... I think they knew what you know where I would try to. The key to those things is to have somebody fresh to feed the guy coming down. So first guy on his feet, that would be me. That I make. I'm a much better. I'm much better at feeding people and taking their bumps than I am at. Like I can't drop kick and you know all that stuff. I don't use clotheslines and stuff like that. But it's just being available and being. You know, trying to be in the middle of the action all the time. How do things not get screwed up in a match that long with that many men involved? I mean, I watched that rumble over and over. I've watched every rumble, some repeatedly. And the amount of faux pas you see, the mistakes are few and far between. Mm -hmm. Well, we're professional athletes. And we're actually uh, trying to alleviate, any, you know, any mistakes. And that particular, there were some really, really good... You know, high level, great workers. I'll use, I'll use that. Some great workers in that ring. Now, and I, and, and as I think people know, 18 or 19 of the guys are in the Hall of Fame. So, All oh, right, that is arguably, and we'll go over some of the names in just a moment, that is arguably the most uh, talent-packed, legend-packed yeah. Royal Rumble ever. Yep. Yep, for sure. Now, uh, you entered at number three. Whose idea was that? Because there's been some uh, debate about whether it was Bobby Heenan's idea or Vince's idea. What do you remember? I, I have to think it was Vince and, and Pat. I don't think Bobby would have been involved in that. I mean, Bobby, Bobby was just too damn good at what he did. I don't think Bobby, you know, Bobby and I were very close friends, so that that helped with Bobby and I ever since the day I started in the business. But I. Uh, I just think that um, that came directly from Vince and Pat. Very well, hands-on. The story Bobby always told was Bobby said you should come in at number one. Yeah. And then Vince said no, number three, and then he took credit for it. Not that Bobby was always beholden to, to telling the truth. Yeah. He'd like to throw the bull a bit, but that, that sounds plausible. Yeah, it could be. I, I, I just I don't remember. I, I, I was so excited. I had just wrestled Hulk the night before in uh, Boston. We were sold out in Boston. So, and that was a like a, a great a great minute for me there alone and to roll into this the next day it was phenomenal now what i think is and i and i just watched the rumble a couple nights ago to prepare for this conversation 
I think 60 Minutes allowed WWE to see all of Ric Flair. It was like a crash course in Ric Flair. And even though your time there to that point had gone very well, I think the Royal Rumble was your true introduction to WWE fans. Yeah, I think it probably was too. I think I think it probably was too. What were you trying to get across to the fans given that opportunity? Because knowing you, I'm sure you saw it as an opportunity. I did, but um, I think a lot of people in that position would have been thinking about how they get through it and, and still make everybody look good. And and I that, that's kind of what I pride myself on um, having done, you know, my whole life. So wasn't worried about that at all. And I, I, I liked everybody. And I, for the first time, I felt like in a couple of years, there was no animosity over me being uh, a, 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 a or being a better performer than somebody else. Well, jealousy. I mean, people in WCW, and, and I'm not sure this didn't carry over when you came back to that promotion, oh. they, they always wanted you to take a back seat. It, it, it's kind of weird that the place where you made your bones was, in, in retrospect, maybe the place where you got the least respect, whereas WWE always gave you your due. Absolutely. Um, like I said, I'm not, I owe Vince McMahon, and I will the rest of my life. Now, what I remember most about not the Rumble... Not Nick Khan. Not Nick Khan, but Vince McMahon. <laughs> no, I, I think we all know the difference by now. Yeah. Uh, what I remember a lot about that Rumble is every new entrant came right for you. Every new yeah. entrant underlined that you were there, you were a threat, and like you said, you fed him. Yep, that's the key. Now, was that part planned, that every guy was going to come right for you? No, not really, but I think they knew, and they, they, if they knew me, they knew I'd be there. Well, and they sense? also knew you'd make them look good. I mean, yeah. I, I, I can't think of an example where a guy went 60 minutes to win a match and made everybody else look great. Have, have, have gun will travel. <laughs> Here's an instance I remember. Let's see if you do. You and Roddy Piper were fighting. Jake Roberts came in the ring. And he just watched you two fight. Yeah. Didn't get involved at all. That's great psychology. Yeah. That says a lot about Jake, about you and Roddy, yeah. too. Yeah, no, Jake, Jake, Jake Smart. And, and none of that was laid out in advance. No. That's just how you feel. Jake Roberts is a great worker. Not good, great. Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard he, for me to believe that something that had... Well, actually, it's not hard for me to believe because I feel, as you do, that things are better called on the fly. But yeah. for something called on the fly, look at all the memorable moments that Rumble provided. Yeah, I know it was great. It was, but it was so easy too. It wasn't. It wasn't stressful. I actually felt very comfortable in the locker room from the minute I got there, as opposed to being where I felt, you know, God, you know, I was I was forty three when I got there, Mark. Think about yeah, that. Yeah, but but that was one advantage you had when you went to WWE, even at that age, Rick. Mm -hmm. was you still look the part very much so you were in tremendous shape and to wwe fans you were brand spanking new i yeah. mean a lot of a lot of wcw fans followed over and watched to be sure which we're going to talk about in a bit but but i would bet that most people that watched that rumble and watched your initial days in wwe thought you were probably mid-30s maybe even early 30s because of the way you looked and because you hadn't been there i hope so because <laughs> I, I swear to you, when they told me that I was too old and needed to cut my hair, that's, I and mean, that's still going to be, I think we might see a hurt weekend and I'm going to shake his hand, but, um, you know, I still cut my hair and man, I mean, it, 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 as, as we've discussed many times, psychologically, it just, it murdered me. Yeah, I know. And, uh, I mean, if you want to shake Jim Hurd's hand when you see him, you can do that. I'm going to have some hard questions for him because I, I still can't believe some of the stuff that, that you were asked to do, but we'll get we'll get back to that. Now, I want to go over some of the names. i got a list here from that Royal Rumble. We talk about the star power in that match. Yep. Hogan, Flair, Piper, Savage, HBK, Jake, Undertaker, DiBiase, Snuka, Iron Sheik, Sergeant Slaughter, Sid Justice, Kerry Von Erich, Davey Boy Smith, the list goes on and on, Nate. Yeah. It's a who's who from that era. It's an amazing group. Yes, absolutely. And, yep. and how how do you get all those guys? Well, it, it's a battle royal, so it's a different psychology. But 
but how do you get all those guys to work together and not let ego get in the way? I, you know, I just think everybody was so happy. When you're up there, even though you work hard, which we all did, but we're all used to that, I think that you just you have a level of comfort because you know you're, you're going to get treated fairly. All you can ask for is to be treated fairly and given the opportunity. Now, what were your most memorable spots from the Rumble? What do you remember just thinking back right now that stood out? Oh, uh, the, the stuff with Roddy, with Roddy, like the jab and punch me, of course. Um, anything, I, anytime I can, you know, touch the Undertaker, be in the ring with him, I, I love that. A very um, young Undertaker, too. Yeah, very yeah. young. Yeah, but, um, and then, of course, having Hulk come in, you know, and just doing my little routine with Hulk, no selling my chops, and, yeah, just having fun. And the thing, which everybody needs to remember, I, I've told people this forever, but which I've always been conscious of, you have to remember that if you're in the focus of the, first of all, like, what, 18 or 19,000 people, you not be your, but you're on, on a camera, you can't stop working. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, you, no, you, for you, sure. You, you have to be careful of every punch, every chop, every kick, because one lame thing can, <laughs> you know, ah, look like crap. I mean, it's just one thing. And the fans pick up on it. Oh, no question. I, I think for the live crowd, and like you said, you're not aware of what camera shots being used. Yeah. You, you got to go all out all the time. You got to sell. You got to, you know, get your stuff in. You got to do everything. You got to wrestle it almost like it's a one on one match, don't you? Yes, absolutely. How hard is that to remember for 60 minutes in that context? Um, it wasn't hard for me at all. I'm telling you, for the minute I got there, I felt relieved. I felt, I felt relief. I, now, I, I, go ahead. Now, it's Mark Madden for Woo Nation Uncensored to talk about paintyourlife.com. When I heard about paintyourlife.com, I thought, what a great idea for a gift to birthdays, anniversaries, weddings. But I figured it must be expensive. It's not. Let me go into detail about paintyourlife.com. If you want to give a truly meaningful gift, you got to try paintyourlife.com. Get a professional hand-painted portrait created from any photo at a truly affordable price or combine photos of people or places you love into one painting. They got a team of world-class artists. You can work with them until every detail is perfect. It's a user-friendly platform. It makes it easy to order a custom-made hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes. It's fast. Get your portrait in as little as two weeks. Send any picture, yourself, your kids, family, a special place, someone you love who isn't around anymore. The list goes on and on. Even an action shot of you or your children playing your favorite sport. It makes the perfect birthday, anniversary, or wedding gift. It's meaningful, it's personal, and it can be cherished forever. Nate, you know the magic of paintyourlife.com. Talk about it. It's an absolutely fabulous concept. I've seen their work. They did a fabulous portrait of Megan and Conrad, my beautiful daughter and Conrad. And now they're painting one of me of a picture I sent in the pink robe, which everybody thought was one of my better robes that I've owned over the years. So I'm excited. I feel honored. I'm going to get paintyourlife.com to do a portrait of me wearing the black butterfly robe. That is what there, people want to see. And we'll at paintyourlife.com, there's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded. Guaranteed. And right now, as a limited time offer, get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off and free shipping, too. To get this special offer, text the word FLAIR to 64000. That's FLAIR to 64000. Text FLAIR to 64000. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Terms apply, available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. Again, text flare to 64,000. 60 minutes is a long time. And I, I I know the answer to this question already, but I got to ask it. Did you blow up at all ever during that match? Did you ever need a second win at any moment? No. Period. Absolutely. Never. Oh, that's, that's what makes you uh, Ric Flair. Now, What's your take on the finish 30 years later? Hogan helped you eliminate Sid to win it. Uh, that's kind of an odd finish within the context of what WWE was trying to do with those characters. 
You know, it was odd, but if you look back on it, he's the kind of guy I think are realistic, but it's realistically, how can I throw a sit over the top rope? Realistically, how can I throw a uh, Hulk over the top rope? I mean, I, I, know, I know that I'm aware of my size, I'm aware of my limitations, I'm aware of the fact that I can, you know, outwork those guys, but at the same time, that's a pretty damn good finish because it, it tied those guys together and it, it, get left, it left me open to anybody. Does that make sense? No, no. A lot of it does make sense. And the physical logistics you describe are, yeah, absolutely. are very how, much how, how am I gonna on throw, point. How am I going to throw a six foot nine, 300 pound sit over the top rope? It right. No, I totally agree. But, but let me throw in a disclaimer. You got cheered and Hogan got booed because he looked like a baby. Mm -hmm. And they had to sweeten the sound on later replays. They even changed Gorilla Monsoon's commentary because he he kind of didn't criticize Hogan, but didn't really put him over. So from that standpoint, it was almost almost a baby face finish for you because Hogan, you know, sit when Sid said it's every man for himself, big boy to Hogan on camera, mm -hmm. people bought that. People bought that. It was true within the context of of the work. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I don't know what I, I you, you're you're reminding me of things that if I look back on it or I recall now, but I I didn't think about that at the time. I didn't I didn't realize that they did that. So I'm hearing about that. I mean, I've heard about it since, but I wasn't aware that night of of those, of those issues. Yeah, it, it's a good finish. It just created a broader context. Yeah, it, kinda... it, it, it left me open to wrestle anybody. Oh, and and put those two together, and it yeah. it did what it was supposed to do. I'm just saying that uh, it was almost like today's booking, which which doesn't pay close heed to baby face and heel like it did back then. By by the standard of the day, it was kind of uh, ambiguous as far as the characters were concerned. Now, I was there in Albany, and you got a lot of cheers all night, Nate, not just at the finish. A lot of WCW and NWA fans were there, and I think that showed the gain WWE made by signing you. A lot of people really did follow you to WWE. Oh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> well, I mean, that must be incredibly gratifying. You, you had to notice it out there during the match. Um, Yeah, it's funny. Um, you know, it's funny, Mark, I look back at my career, and you've been through the trials and tribulations. I, I wasn't calling you every night back then, wondering what the hell was wrong. So I must have been happy, right? Could I, I, I certainly spent a lot of my career calling you late at night going, what the hell? And you, and you actually walking me through it so I could make it to the next day. I'm, I, am, I, am I embellishing? No, no. And thank, thank you for saying so. No, Glad I called. I, I used to call you every Monday night and go, what the? Jeez, WTF. You'd say, Nate, don't worry. Don't worry. They're going to always come back. You know, I mean, and they always did. I was right. I'm always right. I know, but I've been saying, I mean, that, that's when I was cracked. Every time I was there, I should have never gone back. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, it all worked out. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it did all work out. But, uh, but, but again, I, I thought that when you won the Rumble, and I'm speaking as a guy, and even though I'm from Pittsburgh, which is Bruno territory, who I liked till I met him, uh, even though I'm from Pittsburgh, I was a, an NWA guy. I used to watch... Mid Atlantic Wrestling on the on the channel from Johnstown, PA, late at yep. night yep. when I was a kid. Yep. And uh, and to me, it was incredibly gratifying to see our guy, you were our guy, go there and win and get the respect, and to show that we were right in supporting you all along. Uh, speaking as an NWA fan, that that was great. And I'm sure I'm sure a little of that must have dripped down to you. You had to have noticed that. Oh, I guess yeah. Like I said, Mark, you back then, you know, I'm. I was moving so fast, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll just get ready for the next day and the next party. Yeah, well, like I said, you were our guy as an NWA Thank and you. WCW fan, Thank and you. that was just, and if it makes you feel any better, when you would call late at night, you weren't even the last call I got. Usually after I hung up with you, Pillman called. Yeah, okay. He was he, he was more flipped than I was. <laughs> oh, my God. In, in a good, uh, someday we'll do a, a whole a whole episode on Pillman. And we'll both tell yeah. our stories, and and that'll be <laughs> way over the top. Now, I know you've seen that the, is uncensored. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, for sure. I know you've seen the the TV 
uh, replay of that Royal Rumble. I'm sure you've watched yeah. it more than once. I How? actually watched it. I actually watched it uh, last week with Conrad. Right, right for the watch along. That was yeah. awesome. That's the first time I've ever watched. No way. Absolutely. I the you know first me, I, time. I, first time I've ever watched the whole thing back. Yes. Well, now that you have seen it, and I'm sure you've been told about this. How important was Bobby Heenan's commentary for uh, creating what a magic moment the whole match was? As I have footnoted for years, if the commentator doesn't like you and there's something personal going on, I don't care how great your performance can be, you can be dead in the water. Now, well, I, I mean, and that's, you know, you could be the greatest thing, I don't know whether the commentator isn't doing their highs and the lows and da da da, like, it's like uh, uh, Sophia, who does my social media with me, right? Played that entrance, um, played yesterday on uh, uh, Twitter and Instagram that um, the night I walked out for WrestleMania 24, right? And not to, be, not, to, not to bring it up again, but I can't get away from it. And Jerry Lawler, and Jerry and I have been friends forever, but you know, we, um, the last thing Jerry Lawler said, forever the man. <laughs> God damn. Oh, I can't get away from it. Sorry. I promise I won't say anymore. <laughs> well, let, let's get back to Bobby then, because I thought that's the best color commentary ever done in a wrestling match. Bobby Heenan, oh, Royal Bobby. Rumble, it, 1992. It, 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 he sold Bob when you were in trouble and when you won, Nate. When you won, he was legitimately orgasmic. It was so convincing. Yeah. Well, as I said, Bobby Heenan should have been in the Hall of Fame for two, for a, a, being a wrestler and an announcer. Both. And a manager. And a manager. I mean, the guy was a phenomenal in-ring talent, too. But he, he just didn't do it full time. But, boy, he could work. Wow. Well, what was great about Bobby's commentary during the Rumble was he didn't make it just about you, but he always came back to you. Yeah. Always. Like, you know, the, the conversation would wander somewhere else, but then would come back to Ric Flair, be fair to Flair. My God, he's never going to get through this. And it just built up to this climax. It was, again, it was art. I, I I couldn't possibly do any better. Wouldn't even dream that I could. Bobby Heenan, my man. Now, how important was the post-match interview with Okerlund? We talked about that in a little bit of a tease a couple weeks back. I think that's one of the best promos of your career and maybe your best promo ever in WWE. I, I, I guess people say that. Um, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was certainly packed with emotion, and it came from the heart. Who, who, who was smoking the cigarette? Okerlund said, put that cigarette out. Who was that? Pat Patterson. <laughs> that was that was a nice little uh, a, a nice little sidebar, wasn't it? I always yeah. wondered, and I did not know till now who the smoked Pat. the cigarette. So Pat. Pat, huh? Yeah. Now you said in that promo that the WWE title was the only title that meant anything. Was that scripted for you, or was that you? Because that's a pretty big statement for a guy who had been the WCW and NWA standard bearer for so long. Yeah, but the problem is. The end of Bay no longer existed, and um, I guess my the intent was in my saying that is that if you're with the biggest company, the most successful people, the best crew in the world, that's the biggest moment. And the, and the real, reality of it is next to Starcade Harley or the WrestleMania where Shawn beat me and the Royal Rumble. I mean, I've had so many what you call iconic moments, but certainly um, those three have to be considered, you know, some of my biggest. Well, that promo brought a few things full circle, Nate, and let's, let's talk about that. First off, that was the end of you being the real world champion. Mm -hmm. you, you were just WWE champion, the big gold belt. Well, it had been put away, but, you know, the blurred out. Banco yep. belt got put away. So that marked the end of that chapter, which I thought was a pretty good chapter. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. I, I just, just, um, it was phenomenal until the, the end. So who knows? That belt right there, I gifted the hunter with a note because Vince let me keep it, saying, I uh, wish I could have dropped this to you in 1986. 
This week's episode is brought to you by Super Speciosa, which is Kratom, something many of you may already know about. Kratom is an all-natural herb related to the coffee plant. It's been used in Thailand for centuries. It helps energize your mind and relax your body. Super Speciosa is Kratom with just one ingredient, pure Kratom leaf, which helps you feel good without feeling impaired. Tell them, Rick. Hey, Marco. We know a lot of people who are in pain from taking a lot of bumps through the years, and many of them rely on benefits from Kratom for pain relief. That's right, Nate's pain relief. Taking it as a pre-workout or even when you might just need a little extra courage. I've tried it, and it really is something you can take it and you feel good, but you're not impaired. You can function. Superleaf.com slash flare is where to go, and you've got plenty of options. For beginners, we recommend the capsules because they're easy to use. If you're looking for a strain recommendation, the green are the most popular at superleaf.com slash flare. That's right, Mark. Try Kratom now and get 20% off. Go to getsuperleaf.com slash flare and get 20% off with promo code flare. That's F-L-A-I-R. This is 100%. Satisfaction or your money back guaranteed. That's getsuperleaf.com slash flare and get 20% off with promo code flare. F-L-A-I-R. And by the way, that's not just a one-time offer. You can use that code on multiple purchases, even if you've used it before. Quick disclaimer. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Get superleaf.com slash flare and get 20% off with promo code flare. Woo! Well, uh, was there ever any thought given to you bringing both belts on TV after you won the Rumble? No. I don't, I don't, I, they gave me my money and we, I gave them, they ended up having to pay me what they owed me, 42 grand for it. So, Well, that's right. Let's, let's actually uh, shoehorn that in. That's why you took the belt with you because the champion... Uh, pays hey, a you know, I, I'll tell you what, if her does come, we can relive that whole scenario. I well, would love that. Oh, my God. I never thought if he comes, we can relive the whole scenario. Where I said, I said, I'll fly to, Bur- to, uh, I'll fly to Columbus, Ohio, and drop the belt to Barry, whatever you want me to do, or Lex, or whatever the deal you want me to do. Um, he said, no, screw you. Just... Stay home, Doug Dillinger's coming to get the belt. Well, Doug, I don't think so. <laughs> well, and, and, and the, the belt you, was you, already the belt was already FedEx <laughs> up to New York. Now, yep, yep. now, uh, but just to clarify, the NWA and in this case WCW champion put a deposit down on the belt, correct? N- I mean, NWA, not WCW. NWA. Okay, but, but you had paid that deposit. That still applied in that case. 20, Twenty-five grand. Okay, so how'd you get forty-two grand back? Was that interest? That's how long I had it. Interest, yeah, I had it. To, uh, what? Um, I can't remember. Anyway, that was that was that was the, the, the exact check. I'd have to look it up. It may have been thirty-eight. Was either thirty-eight or forty-two thousand? But I had I'd had the belt for ten years, and they didn't want to pay me for it. <laughs> and, and to clarify further. Uh, the, the deposit was paid. Why? In case you would lose the belt, in case it would get damaged. Why did you have to in pay that you, deposit? In case you jump territories. Oh, okay. Which, which you did. <laughs> well, why do you think they made Backlund champion for so long? Go ahead. Could, because they were they, bought, they could nobody could beat Bob. You mean in a shoot? Yeah. Really? You think that's why he was champ that long? Yep. Wow. Did, to your knowledge, though, Nate. Has anybody ever tried no, the, to... No, the, the, the business was that risky back then. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, can you cite any examples of somebody trying to steal the belt in a shoot? Did that ever happen to you? Uh, uh, I would pretty much say Jumbo through to try to take it from me, yeah. If Harley hadn't been there, I certainly couldn't beat him. But I took 30 ju- German suplexes. He was a Greco-Roman. I had no, I had no chance against him. And, 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 and he won a bronze medal. And there was some fear that Jack Venino might try that with you in the Dominican, right? That's why you took Roddy. Well, Jack Venino couldn't have beat me. No, no, no. That, that, that was the thing. 
what what the thing with Roddy the second time was just because I didn't want to get on her alone. The first time was miserable, man. So when I, when I went back to win it back, um, you know, it's one of those things that I, I mean, I, you look back at history, it's pretty cool that I was there and did that, but the only reason I went back was to, you know, get another payday, but I wanted Piper to go, got Roddy a payday, and we got the hell out of there, man. That was, wow. Now, you were the first that, guy. That, that, was a, that was a really rough stint. A, a, another instance where you winning the Rumble and the WWE title came full circle, Rick. Uh, you were the first guy after Buddy Rogers mm-hmm. to hold the NWA and WWE titles. Yes. Uh, again, full circle for the for the first nature boy to do it, then the second nature boy to do it. Uh, that must have been something you thought about at the time. I didn't at the time because I would I didn't keep track of stats like that. But um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, can you look back? Harley was there. Harley didn't win the world championship. I was trying to think. Jack didn't. Terry didn't. Yeah, that was. I mean, I've wrestled so many great wrestlers over the years. I mean, we we use the word good. I'm talking about. I've wrestled some great wrestlers. The, the you know Jack Briscoe, Terry Dory. I mean, back in the old days, Harley Race. I mean, um, those are those are uh, you know names that will carry on forever. Um, whether they're here or not, um, but they were they were great wrestlers. I had an opportunity. I wrestled some guys that weren't very good at the same time, but I got, the majority of the time I was wrestling really really skilled guys. Steamboat, I mean, Sting, Dusty. I mean, the list is endless. I mean, that that, that alone on my resume, the number of people that I wrestled. A lot of that's because I'm older too than than some of the other guys. But the resume that, that I throw out there in terms of who I wrestled with and had, had what you call a good match or whatever your star system is, is, is endless. And I've just, that's just pure good fortune, right place, right people. It takes two to tango, Mark. And that's, I, you know, you know Terry. I'm actually going to see Terry maybe Wednesday. Terry Funk? Yeah, I'm gonna be in, I'm gonna be in, in, uh, Emer- in uh, Lubbock. And I may just jump over, but if not, I'll call him. I think he's out of the nursing home, so. Yes, yes, he is. Mick Foley just went to see him. Nate, if you don't go then, let me know, and I'll go with you when you do go. I'll, I'm going to, if you come, I'll go then. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. I mean, it's up next to you. Week? But next week? I don't know about next. I, I got to wait till, till we get a little bit clear of football, but maybe after the Super Bowl. Okay, for sure. But, uh, I'd love to see Terry. I mean, besides you, I learned more about wrestling from Terry Funk than just about anybody yeah, else. Yeah, well, he, he's out of that um, facility now. I'm back home. So, um, as a matter of fact, I need to give him a call today. I told you what he did, right? He called me about a year ago. This is before he got sick. And I answered the phone. He's, and he's on my caller ID. I go, what are you doing? He said, I've been calling people all morning long, and you're the first one that answered the phone. Who's the left? Who's who's alive besides you and me? <laughs> That's it. But I think I think your brother's alive, but I don't see him very often. Like the last three, the last three traveling world champions, man, are me, Terry, and Dory. That's it. That's all yeah. that's left. Yeah. God. Now, now, one thing about the Royal Rumble, like, and, and let me make a, an off the wall comparison. When the U.S. hockey team won the gold medal in 1980, mm-hmm. that can never be duplicated again because now the pros play and there's no evil empire to play against. There's no Soviet Union. There's no communist menace. The 1992 Royal Rumble now can never be duplicated because there'll never be a guy with your credibility and fame coming from another promotion to make that kind of impact in the biggest promotion right away. It just can't be done again and I think that has a lot to do with why it's remembered so iconically. Yeah, well, I'm very excited, and I, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be looked at in that light, and I'm very honored by it. Thank you. Does it feel like history to you? I mean, you were in the middle of it. Thirty years later, people still talk about it all the time. You're doing watch-alongs with Conrad. Why does that match feel like history? Do you think? Because uh, uh, you know, I think it's because of the, the people that are in it. But right along with that, Mark, you've got to remember that they took me off the opening of the show. 
So, so if I'm iconic, why, why, why is the ultimate warrior there in front of me instead of me? Nate, I'll, I'll tell you exactly why. Because they don't get to determine what's iconic. They don't. No, that no, match but, but is I iconic. Meant, You're iconic. No, but imagine that moment for me to turn on a TV with nobody giving me the heads up. Well, I agree with you. you know, but no, no, it, it's been a joke for so many years. I go, God, I used to, whenever I'm watching this show, I was obviously watching Ashley or whatever, because I watch her re religiously, and I watched Raw last night and everything, to not even have any heads up, and all of a sudden I'm gone. And it made news. You know, not, I, I, you have to, you're forced to look at social media, as we both are now, especially with the podcast, but with no warning, nothing, all of a sudden I'm gone. Nate, I suggest instead of watching the opening, you watch the Royal Rumble, because that's what people care about. I know. And that, that is Ric Flair. Now, here's a big question, and we'll talk about this, the uncensored version at St. Louis. But what was the party like after? Give me some highlights, because I was there, and I can't remember. You were there. Bruce MacArthur was there. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, uh, Beth was there. Um, yeah, we were back at the Hilton, man. We got, we got hammered. We got murdered. <laughs> gee, gee, no kidding. Well, here, here's my, here's my I, story. I think, oh, Oakland was there, you know, the usual crew. Here's my story from the Royal Rumble party. I thought, as usual, you were staying at the Marriott. So I went to the wrong place, and there's no yeah. party, right? Yeah, yeah. And there are no cell phones then. No. So I just said, well, maybe he's at, at this hotel, that hotel. So I called the Hilton, right? Yeah, yeah. They put me through to the hotel bar. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know who picks up the phone? Who? Davey Boy Smith. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I go, hey, is Ric Flair there? And I go, and he goes, who's this? I go, it's a friend of his, Mark Madden. Who's this? He goes, it's Davey Boy Smith. And I go, is Rick there? And I go, and he yells out, he goes, hey, Rick, a guy named Mark Madden's on the phone. Yeah. And you go, well, tell, tell him to get the fuck over to the Hilton. <laughs> and I did, and it was great. Were we drinking? <laughs> we, we were. A lot of people were drinking. It was unbelievable. Yeah. See, and, and nobody was upset. Just a good time. Not. No, of course not. Now, Nate, we got some tweets. God, about I, when, I, when I when I three three years later, when I beat Vader and Charlotte, right, the whole world was upset again. What a bunch of shit. Yeah, that. I mean, now I know what you mean. That's a good point. Just three, just three years later, or one year later. What year was it? Ninety four. Well, when you say the whole world, it, I think it was ninety four. When you the say whole the whole dressing room. The whole dressing room. Yeah, but don't you think that applied to... I mean, it, it wasn't you. It was the promotion. You know, it was it, the wrestlers. It, jealous. The wrestlers. Pure and simple. But they weren't jealous in WWE because they were real stars. That's why. And, and real people. Yeah, but I think that probably a lot of that got skewed by just the personality of the promotion and the dressing room. Does that make yeah, sense? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you know, there were some people that were that I met when you worked with them at WWE that were changed people when they got to WCW. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Um, give me an example of who. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but like, but some people who were easy to work with and weren't jealous came to WCW and kind of became WCW guys. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I do. I think I understand what you're saying. Well, we got some tweets about the Royal Rumble that we're going to get to. Here's one from Liam. Was winning the Rumble and the WWF title really the greatest moment of Rick's life, as was said in the post-match promo? Were those words a shoot or a work? They were that, that at that point in my life, that was the biggest night of my life. That or Starcade. And did anything after Star, that really Starcade eighty three? Right with Harley. Yeah. Did anything after that really compare? I mean, are, are, are those the big two in your mind? Those and the retirement match uh, with Sean. Uh, I mean, the, what, the thing with Vader was, was big, I guess, in the eyes that we had a good match and all that. But once again, the old guy was like 44, 45 then, won the title, you know. Which I wasn't even figured into that at it, it, it all because of an incident over in Europe. Here's one from, uh, from uh, and, and we know about the, the scissors incident you're talking about, right? I guess, yeah. I, I didn't think it's about, yes. Look, we're all adults. Some of us use nicotine to relax, focus, or just unwind after a long day. Lucy Nicotine is a company that was created to help nicotine users 
find a cleaner option, and feel better about the way they consume nicotine. Their latest product is Slim Nicotine Pouches, which contain pure synthetic nicotine and provide the same satisfaction that nicotine users expect, but without any tobacco at all. Lucy Slim Pouches use the newest technology for synthesizing pure nicotine in the lab. I'm talking none of the tobacco, all of the nicotine satisfaction. They come in three strengths, four, eight, and 12 milligrams, and three exclusive flavors, spearmint, mango, and cool cider. I know a bunch of smokers. My mom smoked for 50 years. Lucy products would have been great for her. My buddy Andre uses Lucy, and it's working wonders. What a great alternative. Tell him, Nate. Thank you, Marco. It's 2022. Don't compromise when you're choosing your nicotine products. Go with the newest tobacco-free options from Lucy. Woo! You heard the nature boy. Go to lucy.co and use promo code FLAIR to get 20% off your order of Lucy Slim Pouches or any other Lucy products. That's lucy.co and use promo code FLAIR at checkout. Also, I got to give this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains non-tobacco nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. That's lucy.co and be sure to use the promo code FLAIR. Now, here's one from Justice Beaver, which is a really clever Twitter handle. Uh, did Rick find it odd that he won the title but had to immediately clear the ring so the Sid Hogan feud could be spotlighted? Whose call was that? Uh, well, I'm not sure I saw it that way, but what do you think? I didn't see it that way at all. I saw myself, as, you know, I've been retreating my whole life. If I if I'd stood there in the ring, like that would have been, a, that would have made me like a baby face. I was glad to get out of there. That's how re- that's really how you do business the right way. Yeah. You just you get get out of the way, let the next next piece of business roll on. Well, and here's how I saw it too. Uh, I saw it as you know, like you said, letting the next piece of business come to the fore, which was Sid versus Hogan. Yep. Uh, you got in your thing with Randy, and you co-evented WrestleMania. Yeah. But you immediately got in front of a camera and cut a memorable promo. It wasn't like spotlighting Sid, Sid and Hogan dumped all over you. It yeah. just it just was a reset for a couple seconds. Exactly. Yeah, that's business. That's were, you business. Surpri- were you surprised Sid and Hogan wasn't bigger? I mean, that was a, a pretty natural matchup, wasn't it? Yeah, but I think they were both at that point in time unhappy. Uh, I knew, I think Sid quit after that, didn't he? I'm not sure. Not long after that. I and, think so. And, and Hulk went from there to uh, make his show Thunder in Paradise. Right, right. Uh, won a couple Emmys, I think. Of course, I'm yeah. lying. Now, uh, <laughs> now, uh, what was your take on Sid? You know, I had a big backstage blow up with Sid in WCW over a misunderstanding about something I said. But I thought he was a good old boy. I liked him. I mean, I'm not sure he was great for business. I'm not sure I he was like, I like cooperative. Him. I liked him. He didn't like me. Really? Why didn't he like you? Because he thought I was too old to be in the business. Well, I think time proved uh, that, that what happened no, was what should no, have happened. At that, at that time, I think the whole incident in Europe stemmed from the fact that Arn, I was in the room, sleep, or a guard, I'd just gone to the room, and Arn, and I, you know, and I might credit to Arn every day, you know, Arn, he said something, and Arn said, hey, fuck off, you're talking about my friend. And there, and then it went from there. I didn't see it. Like I said, I, people woke me up and just, just, just that incident went down. And now I, it's funny, I never, I've never even asked about it. So I did years ago, but I, just a horrible situation. But I think uh, that our, our, the reason it happened is because Iron stood up for me. Yep, yep. I, I, I heard that. Now, here's one from Sam. Did you talk to Vince after the Rumble, and, and what did he say? That's a good question. What was Vince's reaction after that tour de force? He just said, good, good job. That's it? Yep. Really? Yep. He wasn't, like, overjoyed? He wasn't, like... No, yeah, I mean, it's just I mean, it's business for him. He does... He's, I mean, he, 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 every, first of all, anything he does is a business decision based on what he thinks is right. So I had no idea I was going to win it. But number two, I'll give you an example. When I wrestled Savage, right? And I'm walking back at at WrestleMania, right? In in Indianapolis. And I'm walking back 
to the um, through the locker room, right? Walking by him, and him and Pat were back there, and he, they called me in the office. And Vince looked at me and said, "Every time you get this close to being great, you do something fucked up." And I said, "What?" Because I caught myself. Because they said no blood, but Randy asked me as a favor, right? So I cut myself. And he said, that's what I said to me. Every time you get this close to being the greatest, you do something, I don't, I don't know if you use the word, the F word, but he, you, do, you do something stupid. Let's, let's, let's put it like that. And, and, how, and how did that play out after that? I, uh, I knew that, I, I mean, that, that told you how much, how much, well, when he says don't do it, he means it. So you learn your lesson. But he wasn't, you know, it, it didn't change the next day. I mean, it didn't, I didn't lose the title the next day because of it. But, it, but when he makes a decision, and I, I wasn't out of lack of respect for him, I thought Randy happy, and that's what I was doing. Here's a tweet from Raj who says, It was nice to see Ric Flair and Kerry Von Erich trade blows at the Rumble. It was flashbacks of Texas Stadium, 1984. I get the gist of, of what this guy's saying, Rick, but that's a long time between 84 and 91. And it was a totally different Kerry Von Erich at that point, nine, wasn't nine, it? 92, yeah. 92, I'm sorry, right. Yeah. Totally different Kerry Von Erich at that point, am I right? What's that? It was a totally different Kerry Von Erich by that time. E absolutely. What the... How long did you and Kerry uh, do anything in that match? Do you remember? I mean, that was... I didn't surprised. watch it the other night. Yeah, we, 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 um, gosh, we, I think we exchanged, you know, we, we, we were together a couple of times. I watched it. He looked, he looked great. I always looked amazing. You forget, sometimes you forget how just impressive he is and, uh, what a physical specimen he is. And that, I, 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 I mean, I, I literally love that kid. So, and it, I, I was there when Lacey was born and, he and Kathy had the baby, and I've, I've seen Kathy a couple times. Just a real tragic ending to a, a, just a really, to a couple of really great kids. Now, I, and, uh, and, you know, I mean, David was a great guy, Chris, and then Carrie, geez. Oh, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. It really is a great American tragedy. Yeah. Now, now here's another one from Raj. In the weeks prior to the Rumble, who did Rick think would win it? From what I understand, Rick only found out he was going to win the day before from Jake Roberts. We talked about the thing with Jake. Uh, did you have any thought about who would win it, or did you just, you know, figure it wouldn't be you? I thought it would be Hulk or Undertaker. Because that's, we, we got to that rumble because of that, because they held the belts up on that, which, um, which uh, Taker reminded me of that, like, a, two years ago. I'd forgotten about that. What they, they did something on Tuesday. Um, yeah, that Tuesday, it was like a mini pay-per-view, Tuesday in Texas. Yeah, where Taker won the belt and then lost it again on Tuesday. Right, right. And there was some kind of, some kind of you know, screw finish, and they, they held the belt up and put it in the Rumble. What's that? There was yes. some kind of, some kind of, you know, some kind of bad finish, and they held it up and put it in the Rumble. Yeah, I think I was involved in that finish, wasn't I? Boy, memory fails, but yeah, I think you might have helped Taker win the title. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but uh, boy, Taker was, it's hard to, you, you forget how long Taker's been around. That's because the character doesn't age, I suppose. No, but, God, but, fabulous. But here's how old I am. I remember him as, as Mean Mark Calloway or Mean Mark Callis in know. the skyscrapers in, in WCW. Oh, I know, I know. What, what God, look where, he's, look where he's at now. You know, it's he obviously is going to be remembered as one of the greatest of all time. No question. For for so many reasons. And not, the great... Not, not just the gimmick, but he is a working fool. Oh, no question. For a guy his size especially. But I will say this. I don't want to limit him to being a gimmick performer, but he's no. the greatest He's the greatest gimmick performer of all time. And that's the oh. greatest gimmick, arguably, of all time. Absolutely. Both. Bo great to both. Now, uh, here's one from Corey. Was Ted DiBiase an all-time great heel? Was he eliminated early on so Rick could get all the heel heat? I wish they would have found a way to have DiBiase spend more time in that rumble. I'm not sure that trying to get you all the heel heat figures into it, but yeah, no. Ted did make an early exit, didn't he? Yeah, that, that wasn't 
Because it would feature me, I don't think. Yeah, I think you had so much talent in that ring for the Rumble that you couldn't think about stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that factored in at all. Where, oh, where was... I, I, I know Ted was at that party that night. <laughs> where, where was Ted at in his... Ted was still a big a big timer then w, in WWE, correct? Oh, absolutely. He, he was a big timer over the whole time he was there. Ted EBS, again, a great worker. Yes. Now, uh, thanks to everybody for the tweets. You can tweet uh, at, at me or at Rick or at Woo Nation Uncensored anytime you want to ask a question of us here on this podcast. Uh, the Royal Rumble is in St. Louis, and you have a great history, Rick, wrestling in St. Louis. It was a unique territory because if memory serves, it was only one city, correct? Just St. Louis, just one city. That was the whole territory. Yes. And how often did they have shows? Well, it, was, it actually was attached to the to the Kansas City territory, but St. Louis was its own entity. Does that make okay. sense? It was booked on its own. It was it, it was a standalone. Yeah, and and the, but there were always several guys from the KC territory allowed to come to St. Louis. The rest of it, the guys could come from. It was a huge honor to be invited to wrestle in St. Louis. That's that just the way it was. You, you come to St. Louis and you're in the big time, in the NWA. And again, Rick, how often did they have shows? I mean, how many arena shows? How many uh, they, they, TV? They, they, they ran all once a month, and then they took the summer off. They ran once a month and took the summer off? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, because and the thought was back then, Mark, Ganya didn't run in the summer either because in the summer... The Midwest people are outside. They're, they're, uh, you know, they're not farming. I mean, you're, you're still there's still a lot of rural area in, in Kansas and Missouri and you know, like Minnesota, Wisconsin. Yeah, Vern ran very seldomly too. So they, I can't say they didn't run. I can't remember if it ran once every. Maybe it ran every three weeks. So, but they, but they did they do house shows that they put on TV or did they do a separate TV taping? Because wrestling at the chase was a separate totally TV separate. tape. Okay. To totally separate. So basically two shows. Two shows. In, in every cycle. Yep. Now, oh, by the way, our crack producer, Steve Kaufman, who is the greatest, who knows far more about wrestling than either of us, maybe because he's younger and hasn't forgotten, but he does a great job. And he said that at Tuesday in Texas, you got involved with a chair at ringside. That's so there I you thought. go. Yep, there you go. He, he helped take her win the title. Steve is the brains of this operation. Our brains have been beat to mush by, I don't know, bumps, alcohol, you name it, it's happened. But uh, Sam Muchnick was the promoter. Near, near death to fine experiences. <laughs> <laughs> and, and more on the way. Uh, yeah. Sam Muchnick was the promoter in St. Louis, and the style was very serious, almost oh. like real sport. What was expected when you wrestled in St. Louis? What did Mr. Muchnick want you to do? Well, if you wrestled in St. Louis, the sleeper was a finish. The abdominal stretch was a finish. The figure four was a finish. There was no turning it over. You do not touch the ropes. And I went to him one night and I said, I was wrestling Dick the Bruiser. And I said, with the figure four, I said, and, and he was right. He said, we'll have a ride if you do it. So, um, but he, I got his permission. I held the rope. So Dick's shoulder, like, it put him in so much pain that he, laid back flat in the referee rather than giving up because you know baby face can't give up that was a that was the word that was the way it was back then um and then he instead of tapping out the guy counted his shoulders down but that was a rarity for you to use the ropes correct oh very rare god what was the crowd reaction when you did that insane insane in a good I mean, way or a bad way no, I mean, they wanted to come in the ring and kill me. Was that walking, just... out, walking out that aisle in St. Louis was a rough night, boy. They, they didn't like the finish. Who were the big stars in St. Louis back when you wrestled there? I know it's a lot of familiar names, but uh, but but who got over there more than most? Okay, big star Dick Murdoch, big star Ted DiBiase, big star Kerry Von Eric, Gene Kaniski, Jack Briscoe, Terry... Dory, uh, Jack Mulligan, Jack Lanza, Pat O'Connor, um, 
Jeez, I'm trying to think. My God, Rick, that's a who's who of wrestling from that era. Harley Race, obviously. I said Harley, yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, you know, I wrestled Gene Kaniski there for an hour. Isn't that crazy? Um, Terry, Dory, the Von Erics were so hot off their TV. They came in there. Obviously, uh, David, David was getting ready when uh, David would have been the NWA champion, you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, um, what about Bruiser Brody? He worked there as oh, well. Oh, Bruiser mentioned- Brody guy. I'm sorry, Bruiser Brody. But I wrestled him there a lot. You yeah. mentioned Dick the Bruiser. I mean. Dick the Bruiser, yep. Now, Dick, Dick the Bruiser and Bruiser Brosey were a little out of character for what Muchnick usually booked, weren't they? Uh, yeah, but remember, um, I mean, you know, so was Dick Murdoch. Dick Murdoch is, is, is going to be remembered. I know I, his name doesn't come up enough. Dick Murdoch may be one of the 10 greatest workers of all time. But Murdoch would do stuff where he would take a bump over the top rope and, like, it would, it would, he'd make people think that he was dizzy and he'd walk into the ring post and take a bump. I mean, there were so many styles there. Von Rasch, you know, the Baron with the claw. I mean, all it, there was no getting out of the claw. Does that make sense? I mean, it yeah. just, everything was a finish. I mean, a, a roll-up was a finish. There was nobody, in, you know, when Wilbur Snyder came in, he put the, the abdominal stretch on somebody. When was the last time you saw somebody give up with the abdominal stretch? Now, now, uh, a couple things, because I, I saw, I was a tape trader back then, but I, I didn't see a lot of St. Louis wrestling. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot's on YouTube now, so check yeah. it out. You'll see what we're talking about. But, but correct me if I'm wrong. There were no managers, right? Or very rarely. Very rarely. Like, wasn't Bobby one of the exceptions? I think he let Bobby come in with somebody at one point. I don't. Well, the Blackjacks came in without Bobby. No, they didn't have managers there a lot. Now, you mentioned the Blackjacks. I, I was told they didn't have a tag team championship and that they very rarely had tag team matches. Is that right? They just had one other title, a Missouri State title. So no tag team title? No. Now, the Missouri State title was very prestigious, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it, it, it was. Now, you, you held it briefly, but that was looked the kind of a stepping stone to bigger and better. Yeah, it's huge. That was the second... That was the second that was the second uh, highest paying position on the card. Missouri title. Yes. Did they have a world title match on pretty much every show? I would say 90% or more, yeah. Now, every promotion, every territory back then had its secondary title. Uh, was the Missouri title the most prestigious of those titles that were secondary to the world belt? And what other promotions had titles that really meant a lot back in that day? Well, I think it, I'm trying to figure out what day, what day and time the Intercontinental Championship became uh, the one that Vince has now. Right. Well, it was the North American title with Pat but, Patterson, yeah. and then they rebranded it. Uh, what what I, year? What year did Pat start that? I want to say that was in the late '70s or early '80s. So Pat was the first, right? Pat was the first, but then yeah. they rebranded it with Ted. I don't think that that. Pat ever lost it to Ted. I think Ted just came in with it. Or maybe Ted came in with the North American and they made it the Intercontinental. Whatever it is, those were the two most prestigious second-ranked belts. Missouri and Intercontinental. Yes, absolutely. Now, uh, did they ever get blood in St. Louis, Rick? Yeah. Really? Did, but yeah. not much, right? Uh, they didn't care. If, you know, if you, if you, if you were willing to do it. Uh, I don't think Sam was... was uh, you know, over the top about it, but he, he let it happen. Now, uh, what about crazy angles? What about, you know, stuff that is over the top by today's standards? No, none. What, no. what, 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 like, what angle you're, can you're, you recall? I can't remember shooting an angle in St. Louis in the old days. Never. You shot the angle on TV and brought what? it to the house show. But even those were relatively conservative angles, right? Oh, very conservative. Like, give me an example of a St. Louis angle, one that you might have been involved in. Actually, I, I can't remember ever shooting an angle. I just remember... <laughs> no, no, I mean, that, that let, when Dick the Bruiser came out and made some promo about me being a little sissy or whatever, you know, I should be wearing a dress, and then... I mean, it was that hot. Wrestling was that hot. It was that simple. And yet, that's why when I watch the shows now, I think, God, how has it changed so much? Because it was so simple. They just loved wrestling. It, it, to me, 
It's a travesty that the Rams are away from St. Louis. It's a great sports town. And wrestling, you're going to, I mean, the Royal Rumble will, will be in this week. Those fans to this day are avid. And I'm, man, I cannot wait for, to watch the Rumble this year. I, I want to jump back to the Intercontinental title. I just got this up here on, on uh, Wikipedia, which obviously is always 100% accurate. WWF North American Heavyweight Champion Pat Patterson became the inaugural champion on September 1st, 1979. It was said he had unified his title with the South American Heavyweight Championship in a tournament in Rio de Janeiro, although both the tournament and South African Championship were entirely fictional. So there you go. That's the branding and the development of the Intercontinental title. Uh, we're talking about St. Louis wrestling with Sam Muchnick. Could that kind of promotion work today? A serious, you know, no. kayfabe style? We, we know too much, don't we? Yeah. Is that good or bad? Bad. Can it ever get back? No. Yeah, there's no putting a toothpaste back in the tube, is there? See, that's the one thing about wrestling that makes me sad, Nate, because mm -hmm. nobody wants to admit it now, but less people watch wrestling than ever before. And I think that's because we no longer can suspend disbelief. Like, I knew it was, you know, what it is since I was a little kid, but the way it's presented made me forget that. And now yeah. we can never forget that. Do you find that to be sad? Well, first of all, the universe is bigger and everybody's making money. But I, th I think the problem that with both companies now is that they're in, in the process of trying to get, you know, it's like once every five years, I'll give you an example again, Sasha, Ashley, or Charlotte, Becky, um, Bailey, right? All at the same time. So, I mean, four of them coming up and all of them making it big. Huge, right. right? Uh, it's like when the guys came up with Roman, Ambrose, and Seth Rollins. The Shield, right? That does not happen every day. Look at the number of guys that have been there. I mean, and they're there for a month or two months or three months and they're gone. And then they're, you know, trying to find somebody else. And I hope that it makes the American people understand that it you just don't walk in there and win over Vince McMahon. You've got to get in that ring and you've got to give them something that they haven't seen or something that's better than what they've seen. Or you're uh, not going to make it. I agree 100%. I, I think the larger-than-life component's been lost, too. I'll give an example because this is in the news. There's a there's a guy in WWE named Mustafa Ali Yeah. who just asked for his release uh, I, in I public. Love I love that kid. Yeah, I think he's great too, Nate. But yeah. he asked for his release in public. I'm not sure that does you any good. And what's he going to do? Go to AEW? They have 20 guys just like him in AEW. The kid's a talent, but I, I can't say he's special. The guys you're talking about, the women you're talking about, are special. You have to find a way to be special. Well, it's hard for me. Uh, to me, he's special as a person. Well, yeah, um, but that's different. No, 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 I know. So, I... And I, and I think it's a hell of a talent, but you're right. There's a lot of guys that are very similar in level of ability. And, uh, but there's also a lot of guys that aren't classy. And that kid is classy as can be. So, um, and I kid with him all the time. I mean, but, you know, once for me, I know it's hard for me to, to separate the two, but respect is a big word. And, uh, you know, I can't even make a smart crack about Ali. I, I don't know what his plans are. And maybe maybe he saved his money. So, who knows? Well, and don't misunderstand me, Nate. I think he's a talent. I just think there's a lot of guys that are like him. And, yeah, but, and, I, and, and I'm not but, sure there's a chance for him to break out like he thinks he should. Not everybody gets to be a star. No, you're right. But I And I don't know if that'll, if he goes to Tony, if that'll happen either. You know what I mean? It's like. I'm, I'm really I'm really happy now that uh, Manny is, uh, um, uh, Andrade is in the program now with uh, Sting and, and uh, Matt Hardy and... Uh, Darby Allen. Bar yeah, I mean, that's going to be great. I think, it's, isn't that their next pay-per-view? Yeah, that and, 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 and uh, Andrade's aligned with Matt Hardy now, which I think yeah, is good for I, him as well. I love that, yeah. Matt's a great talker. Matt's a great guy. Two, two phenomenal workers, I mean... That, that, that Andrade is a working fool, man. Jesus. Working fool. What a piece of talent, huh? 
Oh, no, no question. And, and I think he's going to get better. But, but again, I look at him and I see something special. And I, and I think you got to do that before you make demands. Then again, it's tough to do that if you're not given what is fair opportunity. Then again. Well, yeah, but he's in a great position now and a great oh, opportunity. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about Andrade, but like with Ali, you know, if, you know, I mean, again, not everybody gets to make it. To quote Judd Smales from Caddyshack, the world needs ditch diggers too. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a tough business to make it in. It is. As is every business. But we get more attention because we're on national TV. Right, right. One last thing about Sam Muchnick. He was the NWA president for over 20 years, and that ended in uh, 1975. It said he insisted on clean finishes for the NWA world champ, no matter what, yes. no matter where. Yeah. That, that certainly changed, but, uh, but, but what, how insistent was he on that? When, 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 Sam, when Sam passed away and that rolled over to Bob Geigel, the business changed. How so? Because then it was like, Bob would call me and say, what do you want to do? What do you mean what do I want to do? So with, Sam, with Sam, this is it. So I'd call Sam and, and I remember I'd ask and it's, it's an hour or you win. With Geigel, uh, I, I just, I don't, I, have, I don't have any fond memories of Bob Geigel whatsoever. Not talking about anybody bad, but he didn't pay my trans when I came in from Hawaii. And I mean, I left, uh, Beth and a wife with a tubular pregnancy flew in on a red eye and they didn't pay my trans. I mean, I can tell you some nightmare stories. So, you know, you don't like to ever say anything bad about someone that's not here that can't defend themselves. But I mean, there are some guys that were classy enough to be like Sam Mushik and there's a lot more that weren't. That, well, that's, that, that, that's Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon reeks of class. Does that make sense? Absolutely, but like I got to tell whether you like him or you don't like him. I know I'm using my deal. You can't not ever accuse him of not having class and conducting himself like a man and saying what he thinks and doing what he thinks is right, even though we don't like it. He'll tell you, and that's it. Because Bob Geigo running up, can you man? I mean, it was a downfall of the NWA. Well, Nate, I got to tell you, if you're not willing to blast people who aren't there to defend themselves. You're never going to make it in sports talk radio. Well, I blasted him. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. Say, no, he, he killed He killed him. Because then Fritz would call him. Fritz would say, well, I, the boy, I, he, we can't, I can't beat the boys. So we never did. But that was, that, that, I, that, that was easy for me. Because I could work around. And I liked those kids. They were easy. They weren't kids that were difficult to do business with. Their dad just was. So... But I, you know, if I'm if I'm having a good time, which I did in Texas, and I like the person, I can work around anything. I don't have to win. I can have a good match with anybody. Now, there's one more topic I want to go over before we wrap it up. John Moxley dropped an f bomb on AEW TV when a fan taunted him about his substance problems, and they say the word shit on AEW TV all the time. What's your take on using profanity on live TV? Oh, well, sometimes emotion just gets you, goes over it, you know. Um, God. Mm. I don't know. I, I'm a big fan of John, personally. I, no, no, I no, no, so, so am I, but... but no, but no, I, but, no, but I, I actually, um, John and I and Renee are like, we're, we're like really close. So um, I think he's done a great job there and... Uh, Sometimes you're gonna always you're gonna push the uh, push the button, but if that was that sensitive, I went when I all, all that went down. I said, "Hey, man, you know it's not the end of the world. I've been there. You know what I mean?" So um, it seems like the end of the world when you're there for 35 days, but it's not. You come out and, and life goes on. So and to me, it just looked like John took a break. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, no, I, no, and, and I'm choosing my words real carefully here because I respect John Moxley and even more so what he's been through successfully. Yes. And, and let's hope it takes because, you know, by all accounts, he's a great guy and and, and you oh, would know that great guy, great better guy. than me. But you can't say F on live TV. You can't under any no. circumstances in any context. No, I, I agree. That, because I, you're I, violating an FCC rule. You could get your program taken off the air or fined, which I don't think either is going to happen for a first time. 
but the advertisers are going to hate that. Yeah, did he? Was he walking away, or did he have the mic in his hand? No, he had the mic in his hand. Oh, yeah. He told you know, the guy. It's funny. I I watched that. It was, it was last week. He opened the show, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I for some reason I, I because I was in a bar. Shocker. It was. I, it was. <laughs> the cap, no, it was on. I, I was reading the captions. Right. He, yeah. Instead of instead of the volume being up. It's hard to get people to just turn off. Down here, they're hockey crazy as they are in Pittsburgh. So the fact that I can get wrestling put on in about four or five places down here um, with captions is a big deal when there's, when there's a hockey game. <laughs> well, you see, I don't want John Moxley to be fined or fired or crucified or anything bad. I just want him to not do it again. And if I'm Tony Khan, I want him to not do it again. Yeah. And I don't and I don't reprimand them per se, but I say, look, don't do it again. It's bad for business. And it is bad for business. Yeah. Well, you won't do it again. I don't know. I don't know if, don't know if that talk I just described occurred. I think the tail wags the dog there, but that's for a, another show. Now, uh <laughs> Now now the other uh the other thing about Listen. swearing on TV. Yeah, go ahead. Is that they say shit all the time. Yeah. All the time. Every promo has the word shit in it. And I'll be blunt. When you swear during a promo and it's planned, it's not emotional, you're covering up your lack of creativity and intellect. When you flip the bird on live TV, you're covering up your lack of creativity and intellect. Period. Or you're pandering to the lowest common denominator, which is even worse. Well, I, first of all, um, I thought it was the most entertaining thing in the world when, when Steve Austin flipped the bird. <laughs> So, well, that's different. I, he was a I, pioneer. I, yeah, yeah, he was I a pioneer. I, I can't agree with that thought process. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because it, it's that I was watching, uh, like I'm watching Ozark now, right? And it, the, the, oh, no, me, no, 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 no spoilers. No spoilers. What? No spoilers. Don't spoil it. Don't give it away. No, but the, the you, know, well, you know the show, right? So, yeah. And the, and the guys use the bird to show, but it, there's a time when it's appropriate. And rather, well, than, rather than say it, you just go like this. <laughs> well, what, well what, what, what about using the word shit in a promo, though? Uh, it's not necessary. I mean, you never did it. No. I never heard you swear it, it, during a it, promo. It, all either, those promos, it, it, all either, those years. Either, either did Austin, either did Rock, nobody did. So, you know, that's the whatever, whatever, those guys feel comfortable doing it. You know, I... I don't know if it's a lack of creativity or just they think they're going to get some shock factor because there's no shock factor. It just doesn't sound good. Right, and, and, and this is corny to say, Nate, but kids and their parents are watching, correct? I know, exactly. You know, so I don't know. I, I mean, things are fucked up. I'll say it. We could say it on a podcast. Yeah. But, but I, And like again, I want to reiterate. It's, it's, not, it's not like it used to be. And I know you know this is true. I think John Moxley's great. I just think that he shouldn't have done what he did. And that doesn't mean he's a bad person, a bad wrestler, a bad anything. It just means he shouldn't have done what he did. And I'm getting all kinds of heat on Twitter because I say that. Well, I'm not going to say that on Twitter because I didn't hear it. So I, I just watched him. And I just I, I just watched the crowd. And like I said, I turned it off. So I didn't see that. So, you know, you know me. I'm going to tell you what I think. But I can't, I can't tell you that... Um, it was the uh, worst thing I've ever seen because I've seen a lot worse. Oh no, I no, I I I've I mean, witnessed we're, a lot worse. We're, we're, we're trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. We've seen a lot worse. Yeah, no, no question. But again, all I want, like, here's what I don't like, Nate. And, and I'm a, don't forget, I'm a broadcast veteran who's operated under certain rules for a large number of years, right? Yep. Uh, I don't want people to think it's great. I don't want people to say he's justified. I don't want people to think it was awesome that he did it. It's just not awesome that he did it. Agreed. At any rate, that wraps it up, Nate. Uh, hey, uh, um, <laughs> go ahead. No, I I've been good going back to Moxley. I you know at my age, right? When you go on the road back when I was like managing Ashley and that, you always are looking for someone that that will take me in and because I, mean, I feel young and I like to I like to hang out with the young guys, right? So um, I had great times traveling with John. He's a good a, a good dude. So once again, he, he made a mistake, but 
Um, I, I, I clearly, I, I don't think any less of him for saying that. It happens. No, I don't and, think and, anything. And, and, and we have seen a lot worse. Come on. I don't think anything less of the man at all. Yeah, I just, yeah. I just think the action was ill-advised. Yeah. And I think he could learn to throw a better punch, but that's another discussion <laughs> as well. Nate, uh, you, you predict Kansas City to win it all now, right? I think so. Yeah. You know, actually, to be honest with you, I'd like the Rams, but I don't know because I, you know, I told you I got to meet Aaron Donald and Von Miller, and I mean, I don't know them well, but I. You know, when a guy texts me and I text him back, you know, that that's recognition in itself. Does that make, does that make sense? Oh, for it's sure. Like, it's like when I text Barkley, he texts me back, or I text Darius or Kid Rock. I mean, I've got so many friends in, in, in so many different uh, phases of my life in, in different for different reasons. But if I text Von bon and Von Miller goes, I said, really nice to have met you, word. <laughs> so then I, <laughs> so then he, uh, I guess he mentioned that I texted him when he heard it towards ACL last year. Well, I just and, got a note here. Producer Steve thinks the Rams are going to win it all, but that's because he's an L.A. guy. Well, they're tough, man. I'll tell you well, what. Well, let me if, tell you if, what they – Let me if tell that you what, def, If that defensive line plays like that, Mahomes is going to have a problem. That, that's right. And let me tell you what L.A. has the ability to do that none of the other remaining teams do. They could slow the game down a little bit against Kansas City. Yep. Because of that defense, they could yeah. get some stops. You know, they could they could be judicious with what they yeah. do on offense. So I think of the teams that are left, yeah. they have the best chance to beat Kansas City. I'm just not sure anybody's going to beat Kansas City. And I'm a big uh, Aaron Donald fan, of course. He's from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Penn Hills High School. Yeah. Went to the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm curious to see how Matthew Stafford plays when the games get bigger and bigger. He did a good job at Tampa. But he's turnover prone, and he hasn't been in many games like this. You, I think, uh, I don't know. I think Stafford's on fire. I, I don't think the 49ers can beat him. I don't know. Garoppolo, that Garoppolo magic. Do you know what Garoppolo's record is, Nate, as the Niners starter? Uh, what, 13 and 1? 35 and 15 on his career as the Niners starter, including playoffs. 35 and 15. And they're trying to nudge him out in favor of Trey Lance, who they drafted. Third overall, and I get it, that's a big investment, but I don't know how you kick a guy to the curb after this year, no matter what happens, who's gone 35 and 15, already got you to a Super Bowl, and at minimum this year, got you to a conference championship. I don't know either. But they will. Hey, porn star Jimmy. I like porn star Jimmy. Why do you call him porn star Jimmy? He dated a porn star, you know. That's what that's what Stephen A. Smith calls him. <laughs> yeah, because he, he dated a porn star. I didn't know that. Good takes for him. Lot, takes Good a lot for of, him. Takes a lot of Nate, it takes a lot of courage to do that. You're really in the trenches. Trust ah, me. You, you, you have to almost be the man. <laughs> I have no doubt that you could do it. And, Woo! And, and, and in St. Louis, and like there's still some general admission tickets available for St. Louis. If you're listening to this before that big extravaganza on um, Friday the 28th. Is it the 28th? I gotta look up the calendar now. Friday the 28th just outside St. Louis at Hot Shots. And of course, now my calendar's not working. At any rate, it's this Friday. If you're listening to this on the Wednesday, like most people should do when it's dropped. And Nate, we're going to get the inside story there. We're going to find out about your famous women, the famous women in your life over the years. I will not take no for an answer. You're coming clean. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if Jim Hurd shows up, I don't know what's going to happen then. Oh, I think it'd be great. I think it's absolutely great to just <laughs> because I can tell you sometimes at a front face to face meeting, a lot of things get resolved. <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't know if you know this. You, you know what, what he wanted to do with Stan Hansen, right? What? He wanted to make him into a comedy cowboy. Uh, I, I, I believe that. It was him and I forget the other guys. There were a few, like, we had a couple of cowboy characters. Yeah. He wanted to make him the desperados and be like these bumbling fools. So Stan yeah. just went back to Japan. Well, you know what I'm doing, right? In honor of him? No. I'm getting my ear pierced tomorrow. I'll, when I see you Thursday, I'll be pierced here. I, I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> if you, what you should do, you should show up wearing one of those gladiator togas, like Spartacus. Instead of a robe? Come on. Nah, you're right. Stick with me. Hey, hey, the Marriott Hotel. Woo! 
Not 18 to 28, no boyfriends, no husbands. All the way Mark live. Mark Madden, the nature boy, nature. all night long. Nate, I got to tell Woo. you, I'm even willing to take the age upward to about 44. Yeah, all right, well, yeah, that, I was just going back to old one. I think I'm going to trademark a new saying. I think, yeah, 35 to, 35 to maybe 55 my age now. Would that be 20 years younger? Yeah. And producer Steve has confirmed Friday the 28th in, I believe it's called O'Fallon, Illinois, at Hot Shots, just outside St. Louis. The Nate, live, uncensored, even more uncensored, it's going to be unbelievable. With Mark Madden. Woo! And I'll tell you what, it's going to look a lot better than my kitchen. That's Ric Flair. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's all for me. That's Ric Flair. No, no. Hey, while you're out of town, I'm having your whole place redone. You're going to come home, and you're going to have a completely different look. <laughs> people love people love the kitchen. That's Ric Flair. I'm Mark Mann. Thank you for listening to Woo Nation Uncensored. Woo!